Hey everybody. So today I'd like to introduce you to a man by the name of Richard Montanez. And the bulk of this story comes from a Twitter thread by Ann Keith Harapi. Richard Montanez grew up in Cucamonga Valley, California, sharing a one-room cinder block hut with 14 family members. He dreaded school. Barely able to speak English, he'd cry to his mother as she was getting him ready for class. He dropped out of school in fourth grade and took odd jobs at farms and factories to help make ends meet. Some years later, in 1976, a neighbor let him know of a job opening for a factory janitor at the Frito-Lay plant down the road. The $4 an hour pay was more than he had ever made. So that day I got hired. And I got hired as a janitor. And I remember I went home and I told my dad and my grandfather. You know what they told me? When you mop that floor, don't forget that you are a montañez. Let that floor shine. Work hard. Make people proud to know you. So I remember I had this attitude, and somebody said you were just a janitor. You know what? There's no such thing as just a janitor. No such thing as just a waiter. No such thing as just a bus driver. When you work hard and you have it in your heart that you're going to be the best at that, that's all that's important. So I said, I'm going to be the best janitor Frito-Lay ever had. Richard spent his off time learning about the company's products, manufacturing, marketing, and more. He even asked salesmen to tag along and watch them sell. And then I asked the salesman if I could go with him on a weekend. I said, I'll load your truck up. So I went to the stores with him and I loaded the Frito-Lay products and just had a great learning the business, whatever I could. I was looking, and this was many, many years ago, and I saw it. I saw. And here's what I saw. I saw no products that were catering to Latinos or to the person who loves spices. It was all pretty much, you know, salt and maybe barbecue flavored. Uh, no one was selling you know, spicy flavored or anything hot. So I'm like, that was it. And I even looked at the salesman next to me and I'm thinking like, don't you see what I see? You're here right. every I'm day. I'm connecting these dots. Come on now. So he took me home and I remember I went home and I sat in our, on our porch and we have the old fashioned um, um, of steps, you know, concrete. So I'm sitting there and in my neighborhood and a lot of Latino neighborhoods like mine that I grew up in, we have something that is called the uh, elote man. It's a vendor. It's a corn, called the corn man. And he sells... Uh, uh, corn on a stick, and he puts mayonnaise, butter, cheese, however you want it, lime, chili. And uh, remember, I whistled and I said, Let me have two, you know, one for my son here. And I said, Yeah, with everything, of course. So I'm eating and I'm thinking, What could I do? What could I create? And then I looked at that, and it looked just like a Cheeto. And it was just like, like that, Jeremy. I thought, oh, There it is. What if I put chili on a Cheeto? In the mid-1980s, Frito-Lay started to struggle. The CEO announced a new initiative to all 300,000 employees, act like an owner, trying to empower them to work more creatively and efficiently. Montañez listened. Then he called the CEO. Mr. Enrico's office, who is this? Richard Montañez in California. You're the VP overseeing California? No, I work at the Rancho Cucamonga plant. Oh, so you're the VP of Ops? No, I work inside the plant. You're the manager? No, I'm the janitor. The CEO got on the line. Loving the initiative, he told Richard to prepare a presentation and he set a meeting in two weeks' time. Stunned, Richard ran to the library and picked up a book on marketing strategies. Then he started prepping. And I went to, uh, I went to, to uh, an old store and I bought a tie for $3.50. And my neighbor actually tied it for me. So here I am, I'm getting ready, and guess what? I'm doing pretty good. I'm presenting it. The Latino market was ready to explode, Montañez explained. Inspired by elote, a Mexican street corn covered in spices, Richard had created his own snack. He pulled out 100 plastic baggies. He had taken Cheetos from the factory and coated them in his own mix of spices. He had even sealed the bags with a clothing iron and had hand-drawn a logo on each one. The room went silent. After a few moments, the CEO spoke. Put that mop away, you're coming with us. 
Flamin' Hot Cheetos became one of the most successful launches in Frito-Lay history. They went on to become a viral pop culture sensation. Richard became a VP and amassed a $20 million fortune. Not bad for a boy from Cucamonga. So I love a lot of things about this story, and I find I agree 100% with the following commentary that some people posted in response. They wrote, I saw two inspirational people in this story. First, a janitor willing to learn and grow. Second, a CEO willing to admit that anyone could have a valuable idea, then act on it. Without the CEO's willingness to learn, it all would have failed. And then the response, and a third, Ricardo's grandfather, who taught him to take pride in everything he did. All right, now it's your turn. In your classes right now, please discuss the following two questions. Number one, how did Richard Montanez show initiative? That means starting something on your own without waiting for somebody to make you do it. And then number two, what is the most interesting part of Richard's story to you? Discuss that in your classes right now and have a great day.